Hey, how are you today? Uh, I'm Ken. I'm Marcy. And uh, we are with the Paranormal Channel. This is a new channel, uh, and we're hoping to get a lot of followers and have everyone uh, join us. Um, our objective here is to have a place for you to call in, tell us your stories, give us your questions. Uh, you can also email them. Um, we will tell the stories uh, on our, uh, our channel. Um, but we also want to be very interactive with everybody. Um, you know, we are open to doing some investigations. We Together, we have a combined total between 30 to 40 years of paranormal investigating. Now, we will do more than just ghostly and demonic. Uh, we are open to anything from witchcraft to aliens. Um, so definitely, uh, if you have any questions or uh, concerns um, or uh, you know, stories you want to tell us, give us a call. Um, so today we're just going to start with something very simple, and uh, we're going to start with a, a, a story uh, that has happened to us. Um, do you want me to go first? Yeah, you can. Uh, I can't hear you nodding your head. <laughs> okay, so um, back in about 2006, uh, we used to have a cleaning company, and one of the uh, places we were cleaning was a daycare. Now, there's some back story to the daycare, which we'll get into a, towards the end of the story. Um, but one of the very first things we ran into um, there was we had hired a new girl to work for us, and we were training her. It was her and I in the building. We were the only two in the building. And um, it was like a third day, I think. We'll call her Kristen. And uh, we were there, and um, I don't know. I think it was probably about 8 o'clock at night. And uh, as we were cleaning, I was mopping a hallway. She had been in a room vacuuming the last I knew. Uh, but as I was mopping, you know, I saw her run across, not run, but walk across the hallway and walk behind this counter going towards the janitor's closet. And the counter stands about, about four feet tall. She was a, a short little girl. Um... So I thought, you know, I, I, I yelled to her. I'm like, hey, uh, grab me this other bucket. I, and she didn't reply. So I said her name three or four times. Kristen, no answer. Kristen, no answer. And then finally she answers, but she came out of the room behind me. She goes, what? And I'm like, oh. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, didn't you just go to the janitor's closet? She goes, no. And I'm like, Okay, and I knew it wasn't my eyes playing tricks on me because I really saw it. I mean, it wasn't like I caught a little glimpse. I really, I saw the head walk past it, and it was, you know, there's like computers and fax machines on top. So all I would have saw was the top of the head, and it had curly hair like her. So I was like, wow, that's crazy. So I went to the front door. It was still locked. And, and to walk in, I would have heard some kind of noise. Like um, they have this like loud like buzzer that anytime, anytime anyone walks in the front door. So I thought to myself, maybe it was one of the owners, but I couldn't imagine who it would have been because they're not very short. Um, so her and I walk over to the janitor's closet. I open the janitor's closet and no one's in there. Now, the, the weird thing about this is once I started calling for her, um, I take my eyes off that area. The only other way they could have left was, would have been through the back door going out to the playground. Now, it was snowing out. It just started that evening, so the daycare was closed when it started. Um, and it was about two, three inches of snow on the ground at that point. So first thing I did is I looked out the back door, and there's no footprints anywhere. No way anyone could have left that building without me knowing. Uh, but for you know, sake of argument, I went to the front door, opened it, looked, and uh, no footprints in the front either. Now, you can say I was maybe delusional. You know, anything is possible. <laughs> uh, but we were standing there talking about it. And from down the hallway, we hear a little, like, kind of like a tapping sound. So we look, and all of a sudden, out of the room, comes a little green ball rolling down the hall. And obviously, we ran down the hall to go in the room. And there was no way for that person to get out. And there was nobody in there. Now, so many things happened after that. Um, you know, I really can't get into the, the details of 
exactly what happened as to, you know, why this place had some kind of activity going until um, I'm able to tell you about the backing of the story or uh, of the land it was on. But uh, I guess I can... Do you mind if I keep going a little bit? You can. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I, I'll tell you another story that will lead us to what, uh, how we found out about what was going on here. Um, but I'll have plenty of other stories about this place as we go along. Um, one day we were cleaning, and uh, it was me, my fiance, and that I believe it was that girl, Kristen. And uh, we were cleaning up the place, and we had just finished. And every time we would finish, I would do a walkthrough afterwards because there were times that the ghosts liked to play with me, and they would do things after we cleaned, yes, which was kind of frustrating. Yes, so I always did a double check to make sure. Um, but this one particular time, we went back through, and everything was looking good till we got to the last room. And we walked in there, and if you've ever seen them, there, there's like these like building blocks that kids have the like they're made of wood they're kind of old school old style type um but they were laying in the middle of the the room in the shape of kind of like a cross so i'll explain what it looked like it was a, a line going down and a double line going through one on top of the other a little bit smaller than the other so we took some pictures of it and yeah, i'm going to try to figure out how to post some of these pictures that go along with these stories uh, so, you know, bear with us and you'll see some of this stuff as well. Um, we, uh, we took pictures of it cause we were like, wow, this is crazy. Um, so, you know, we're trying to figure out what this, this thing meant. It was too perfectly put together to be just like thrown on the ground. Um, so we did a little bit of uh, looking around and in the process, I talked to the owner of the building and he wasn't too keen on talking to me the very first time I approached him, but eventually he's, you know, he did tell to me, he's like, you know, oh, back in the 40s or 50s, I believe he said, uh, there was uh, a family farm there, and there was like several kids and, you know, a mother and a father, and someone had come in and massacred all of them and left them for dead, and so the, uh, you know, they believe that's why it was haunted. The owners didn't know it was haunted. They, they knew very well that it was haunted. Uh, but obviously in a daycare, you don't want to like kind of talk about that too much because, well, that's not going to be good for business. Um, so I'm like, okay, so, you know, we researched that. But we didn't find anything on it. Never did. But there was a little discrepancy on what the land was called at the time. Um, we weren't sure if it was... You know, if it was Statum or if it was Atlanta. And then we looked at the thing and it said there was a part of time where it was called Dandum. Um, now, these aren't exact names because obviously I'm trying not to make things too obvious here. Uh, so we weren't really sure. We never found anything on it. We're going to go forward several years. And um, we had also opened up a food park. And we were in the same town down the road. And one of my customers came time. Nice guy. And he's like, we got talking about things. And he told me that he worked in the area. And I'm like, oh, what do you do? And he's like, oh, we're, you know, I, I run the uh, historical society for the town. I'm like, oh, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, me and my family have been doing it for, you know, many years. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I kind of thought about, you know, hey, you know, did you ever hear about, you know, this murder that happened here? And he goes, no. No. He goes, I don't, never. I, I, don't, I don't remember any of that. He's about to look into it. So, a few days later, he comes back. He goes, yeah, he goes, I don't know what you heard. He goes, but that's not whatever. There was never a farm on this land. And I'm like, really? So then I kind of went into, wow, you know what? What could it be? Um, and I told him what was going on in one of the buildings that was on the, air, the land. And he's like, he goes, I look at it. Uh, he goes, uh, oh, no, that's what he said to me. He goes, it was a... Uh, uh, not a, a tuberculosis center. It was the biggest tuberculosis center in the United States at the time. Uh, and it covered over 2,000 acres. And this is where this property fell on. And I'm like, oh, I said, you know, because you're any way you can give me some information on this. And he goes, yeah, absolutely. So a few days later, he comes in with a whole packet. And yeah, it was built in like 1700s or 1800s. I don't remember all the numbers now. 
Uh, and when I looked at it, sure enough, man, it was a tuberculosis center first before anything else. And the funny thing about that is, and the stuff, the, the sign for the tuberculosis center was that cross that I was telling you about. Um, so that was number one. But number two, the, uh, there was things listed when you go online. And, you know, if you guys want to, um, email me, I will give you some more information on it so you can look it up yourself. Uh, but I don't want to publicly announce what the name of the, the place was. Um, but if you research it, which we did, you'll see that there was, um, uh, when they built, when they first started making the buildings for the tuberculosis center, people were complaining that there's paranormal things happening then. So it makes you wonder, okay, well, then obviously beforehand, the land had been haunted. Now, one other thing they did with the tuberculosis center is the people that were left there that families never came back for, because people forgot about them back then. They didn't care. Well, they still do it now, I think. Um, but back then, they didn't really give them proper burials. They just threw them into this yard and buried them, and they were all under like a number. And we did find that as well. Uh, kind of crazy. We have pictures of that as well. I will show you that too down the line. Um, but the uh, uh, the research we had found out was, you know, which is not very uncommon for our area, is before the tuberculosis center, it was a very big area for Native Americans. Uh, they lived. They buried the dead. They had a warship ground very very much on the, the 2,000 acres. So there was a lot of things that happened in this place and the amount of activity that happened here and nothing was ever harmful. But the amount of activity that happened was, it was just insane. And, and you know, for us, it was a big thing because, you know, we were into this stuff and, you know, it just really, it really uh, got us to do a lot more on the research level uh, of the paranormal and learning how to investigate a little bit more. Um, the, uh, the, uh,